Eric, the Bitcoin price remained quite stable in the last uh, 24 hours. Are there any um, specific movement that you would like to, to point out? Maybe what are the main support and resistance levels? And if you consider that we are still in an upward trend? So Bitcoin actually did something pretty um, significant last night with uh, closing the weekly. We closed above a level that we haven't closed above in um, well over a year. So if you remember back on over here from February of 2018, uh, Bitcoin got a pretty nasty bull trap in this area um, it, uh, just about a year and a half ago. And to get back above it, to actually close our first weekly above it for the first time in, in literally a year and a half is quite significant to me as this was a trappy area. So there's multiple things going on here. Usually when you see an area like this kind of get, um, special attention, it's because we're looking at institutional order flow dynamics at play. You see a big players essentially presenting the illusion of a massive breakout right in over here to the upside. What does it end up turning into? A trap. So that tells us that going forwards here, this is going to be a massive pivot on price action. You can see it still gets uh, respected in our more current times, uh, just a few, uh, uh, you know, about a month ago in July. And then once again, just just as of yesterday, we actually closed above this region. So to me, that does ind in indicate that longer term, the trajectory is still to the upside. I'll still be looking for this to trend to the upside. You know, timing of this sort of thing is is, is always going to be variable. I'm not. I, I don't feel too confident on some. Uh, you know, talking on some like that. But uh, overall, I do believe that we're seeing constructive behavior, which is you know going to lead on to uh, to higher prices. You know, over these next few months. Bitcoin experienced a sudden drop on Saturday, which brought it down uh, four hundred dollars in just a few minutes. So, mm -hmm. what do you think could be the the cause of such an abrupt drop? And don't you think that uh, like that could be involving some big whale, so uh, a big owner of a big quantity of uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. The thing is, um, you know, when we see a drop like that on the weekend, uh, weekend players are, or sorry, weekend plays typically just involve less amount of people in the market. So there's lower liquidity. So you can force these sorts of movements a lot easier. It doesn't take as much capital to wash some people out. And uh, with Bitcoin's posturing over on the higher time frames, I'd imagine that bigger players are probably trying to run out the over leveraged people um, with that nice little move to the downside. Now, of course, there were some formations in play as well. We had we had a symmetrical triangle that we broke to the downside, which actually hit one to one. And, uh, and, you know, some other technicals that plays, um, you know, that were suggesting a move down there. But at the end of the day, like what, you know, what really happened with the move? Well, the only answer that I can ever give ever is, and it's a boring answer, but it's true. Um, there is, there is more sellers than buyers. Uh, it wasn't one single person. Maybe, maybe not. We'll never know. It also doesn't really matter if we know or not the trading is the same, right? The, the only thing that we can kind of standardize, um, in understanding of price action is quite by quite literally just looking at the footprints in price action, not necessarily diving into perhaps subjective reasons reasons why people may or may not be uh, selling at the you know at a price like that but if I had to had to do a little bit of mental masturbation with it I would say probably at some you know probably someone wanted to watch some over leveraged people out and uh, looking at the higher time frames looking at the general trajectory of Bitcoin they're probably they're probably preparing for a counter trend move essentially based off that can you tell us a bit more about altcoins now so there are any other altcoins mm -hmm. displaying interesting performances that you would like to talk about yeah, so a lot of altcoins bounced recently. I'm going to be looking at the Bitcoin dominance chart right here. So this is essentially uh, charting Bitcoin's market cap versus all of the all, all of the altcoins in this market. And uh, and just like Bitcoin's price, the trend has been extremely strong to the upside. While we did find a little bit of a top right here, um, these are the 200 simple and 200 exponential moving averages right here. Um, I do think that this is massively bullish over a long period of time. Uh, looking at our higher time frames, like a monthly, yes, we just hit our first resistance, but you know, do I think this continues on over time? Yes, uh, I do. I'd, I'd be super bullish on this. So while I do think that a lot of alts actually do look interesting here, they're going to probably pop up a little bit more as this comes down off this first major top. I'd say longer term, do I think that it's still interesting? Not so much. I mean, even just looking across the board, uh, mo we're, we're actually seeing something very, 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 very unique right now in this market. Very rarely do we see um, altcoins and Bitcoin go in, in different directions versus US dollar versus Satoshi's, yeah, absolutely. That's how it's designed. But versus U.S. dollar, very rarely do we think do we see the market kind of bifurcate like that. Usually, everything kind of moves with each other. And right now, we see Bitcoin kind of in a more bullish posturing. But looking at all the top altcoins, I see uh, 
I, I don't see anything that I really like. I mean, just, you know, for example, right here, uh, Ethereum uh, looks very sick. Um, looking at Litecoin, Litecoin looks very sick. I mean, these, <laughs> these, are not, um, these are not good setups right here. In the past, though, we very rarely see, you know, the markets actually bifurcate. So I, I, do, have a, I do have a little bit of difficult um, time saying that, uh, that altcoins are going to, you know, go down while Bitcoin goes up. We just very rarely see that. Um, but I would say that uh, if Bitcoin is going to break to the upside here, if Bitcoin is really going to get that fall through that we were spoke, speaking about earlier, that's likely going to pass on through to the altcoins, which is going to affect them doubly. It's kind of like an emotional little brother in a sense, um, you know, playing out those moves more aggressively. So I would say that uh, looking at Bitcoin or sorry, look, you know, looking at the general altcoin sphere, kind of like the gist of what I'm saying is versus if we're looking at them versus Satoshi's probably going to bounce a little bit here. I think that the bounces get extended, um, you know, a little bit more. But uh, longer term, I would be actually looking for those get faded on most of them. Of course, there's some stronger ones here and there. I think um, the ones that stand out are the ones that have been rallying for the past year. Uh, contrary to the to the to the to the general market direction, which is very impressive when they're rallying with Bitcoin versus Satoshi's something like uh, Chainlink, I believe, um, you know, had a good chart. Uh, I think Ren kind of stood out. Uh, uh, Ren BTC, whatever that is, people ask about it a lot. Um, and uh, there's a couple other ones. Maybe uh, maybe it's Mona. No, I'm I'm, I'm probably not recalling it uh, perfectly, but. Um, there, there's been a couple ones, basically the general gist is if your altcoin has been rallying for the past year or any time during the past year with Bitcoin versus Satoshi's, that's probably a good sign. And those probably are going to be the beneficiaries of any sort of a major reprieve here. Um, when we're looking at the Bitcoin dominance chart starting to fall back a little bit. Another question would be related to Goldman Sachs, which lately, mm -hmm. uh, issued a report, uh, an analysis about Bitcoin price. Uh, they seem to be quite bullish. They said that the short term target for Bitcoin now is like $13,971 and that investors should buy um, in the current situation during dips uh, as long as we don't trace lower than $9,084. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would like to ask you, do you agree with this analysis? And uh, whether you think that uh, Goldman Sachs being like a big institutional investors making this kind of prediction can have any um, impact or implication for uh, for the price and in general for for the industry. OK, yeah. So Goldman Sachs coming coming out and saying something like this is is a big deal. Actually, um, they are one of the more reputable players in this game. And from my from my from my experience in traditional markets, uh, when Goldman Sachs says something like that, it typically does hold some weight. Um, do I agree with their analysis overall? I mean, I suppose that we would both be generally bullish um, over the long term is what the, is what it kind of sounds like, they, like they're getting out. Would I agree with their with their targets um, to the downside? I would I would disagree. I, I think that um, I think that Bitcoin loses its bullish composure anywhere below. Uh, 10 to would be would be a massive blow if we if we took that out to the downside and the 9500 would be uh, I, I I would I'd be looking for significantly lower price if that were to happen um, so I don't really see where they're getting 9000 from but overall um, I do agree with them and I would say that uh, is it a good thing that that Goldman Sachs is getting into the game like this um, I mean it's an inevitable thing the my experience in the traditional markets when a big bank comes out and says something like this, typically it does cause, cause an initial reaction with the retailers and then things get kind of faded over time. And usually, usually you see that, uh, that expectation get faded, um, you know, over like the medium term, if you want to call it that, like the next couple of weeks, perhaps. And then longer term, actually, a lot of the time, a lot of the time they have been right, to be fair. Cointelegraph, like, subscribe and hodl.